Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. We're in the basement of the Robotics Institute at CMU for another installment of Yinzer Backstage Pass. We're going to be checking out the Matt Lab, which is run, of course, by a Matt, Matt Travers here, who's on the faculty uh, here of the Robotics Institute. And so I, I don't even know what to say here. You're just going to have to tell me what's happening. Cool. Uh, well, welcome, first and foremost, and glad to have you. So yeah, we're going to show you some robots here today and sort of tell you about a little bit of the story behind them and, and just sort of where we're going, where we're at today, and where we're going. Okay, sweet. We got a, a, a little snake right. looking buddy. We'll start with the, the snake robot here. Um, this project actually goes back about 20 years. Um, so we've been developing all sorts of different generations of them. We're working on the controllers and all this stuff like to actually make the, the system move. Uh, if you actually look in the background over here, the robot, the, it's like very capable and it can do lots of cool stuff like, you know, for example, climb a leg. Um, so this robot, though, it actually it looks cool. It's bio-inspired, um, right? It, it moves around like a snake. Um, there's actually not a ton of intelligence on the robot. Um, so the intelligence is basically standing behind me. The driver is, is doing the, the intelligence. So, and what an intelligent driver back there. It is. It's very, yeah, very much so. Um, so in terms of why we actually built this robot, um, so search and rescue, so I've actually been in Mexico with this robot after the um, earthquakes and like building collapses several years ago, pre-COVID, back in the day. Um, so this robot, if you actually look, there's a camera on the front of it. Um, so the idea is that it can slither and go places where humans can't, or it's just be completely unsafe to uh, put humans, and be able to go and search for survivors. Uh, so we actually did, we've said for a very long time that we built this robot for search and rescue. I think this is the first time it was actually in a real search and rescue. Um, so How'd it do? Uh, marginally well. Yeah. Uh, it was basically a sideshow, if I'm being honest with you. But um, it was cool. I mean, it was, it was an, a, you know, quite an experience to go down there um, and actually work with the Mexican Red Cross. Yeah. And just really, like, in terms of a learning experience, it was ultimately, like, very, very fruitful. Yeah. Um, and again, it's just, you know, going and doing it. Um, so again, I was sort of alluding to this robot, though, cool, and we can use it, it is functional, we've taken it in the field, um, it's hardened for like a university project, this is quite a robot, um, yeah. so to speak. It looks uh, really rugged. It is, I mean, it's been designed, again, so over like 20 years and lots of iterations, it's really come a long way. Um, so we actually built this robot um, from scratch here in a, another sort of lab that I'm involved in, the Biorobotics Institute, uh, or the, excuse me, the Biorobotics Lab. Okay. Um, lots of institutes, labs, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Um, so sort of moving in the direction of bio-inspired. Uh, so this is actually another robot that's built by Boston Dynamics. Um, it's a famous robot on YouTube. Um, this is the Spot robot. Um, so as part of a different project, um, still sort of sticking with the bio-inspired you know, bio theme. Um, we sort of choose your favorite pet and turn it into a robot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so again, sort of truth into advertising, a lot of the behaviors that you're looking at, and yeah, you can sort of move it around, um, uh, come sort of from the, the company Boston Dynamics, um, who like several of the founders used to be professors here. So there's, there's a lineage. Yeah. Um, so what we're, you know, within my lab, Matt Lab, um, sort of taking some of the technology, the lessons learned in actually building the robots, developing the behaviors, and starting to add levels of intelligence on top of them, quite literally in this case. Right. Um, I guess piled on top, you have all these boxes, and there's looks like there's a yep. ton of cameras and sensors up there. Yeah, that's right. So everything that's basically not yellow uh, is from us. Uh, so, you know, building our technology quite literally on its back again. Um, so you can sort of see this is Prasanna over here, who's actually controlling the robot. Um, like how fast can this little guy move? Yeah, moving around. Uh, it can do all sorts of different behaviors. So it's, actually, it's super impressive, to be honest with you. It's, it's really good at going up and down stairs. It can do a little jig. It can do all sorts of different stuff. That's probably about its top speed. Um, so a couple of some Celtic inspired dance, yeah. sort of river dance. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> We're here to entertain. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a remarkable robot, a remarkable system. I mean, it's arguably the most you know sophisticated robot that you can, money can buy um, that actually works. Uh, other than it's not industrial um, for what we do for field robots. Yeah. Um, so that's you know, I mean, roughly in that direction. So it, this could like climb a mountain or something. Yeah, theoretically. Um, yeah, if it was covered in stairs, it would do a pretty good job of being able okay. to climb a mountain. Um, like Great Wall of China, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, moving in the direction, really, of uh, trying to make the robots more effective. So, again, like, we've used this for search and rescue, but it requires, like, an expert who knows how to use the system and that. We'd like to have some of that same capability, but we'd like to make it easier, uh, ultimately, in the future, for operators to actually be able to utilize that tool. 
for us and for me, that means adding automation or adding autonomy to it, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what you're looking at. Everything on top of the robot is that. So it's a decision. It's a bunch of sensors, and it's a computer that's making decisions based on what the sensors are seeing. And you're like, OK, show. which way do I turn in the cave? I'll go left. And yeah. the robot decides so, on its own. And they want, we call it like sliding mode autonomy, uh, which means that like not everybody wants to send a robot off to go explore a space all on its own in complete autonomy because there's a risk factor with doing that. So a lot of people actually want to sort of have partial control, but you know, sending the, the robots like a, an easy to follow command. Um, right. So I'll actually show you that next. Um, so the same. And like part of what we do... Eels, come on. I know, I know. Um, so what you're looking at, or what you're looking at on the spot robot, and what you're looking at with this robot, the thing that's common to them is the intelligence. Um, so this box, um, the, the sensors, and the, the actual like decision making. Um, so while we're very much inspired by this robot, um, we're able to sort of do joint development where we can actually just focus. This is a much simpler system to work with and control. They don't break as much, no, right. no offense. Um, but being able to sort of develop the autonomy uh, on a simpler platform allows us to advance the autonomy without having to sort of deal with the coupled problem. Uh, and then we take the lessons learned here and ultimately port them over there. And we, I can see that it's looking at us right now. I can like see me on these little you look, views. You look good. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so on this robot and what you sort of couldn't see on the spot, but what was going on in the background um, is this. So it's an interface where like, you can actually see the cameras. You can see the 3D map. The thing at the bottom is what's being uh, produced by this little hockey puck looking thing on the top of the robot, um, which is a Velodyne, which is a LiDAR. So what's unique here is like, the spot is great, um, but sometimes like, unless you really have stairs or something specific, there could be other robots that could travel faster, cover more ground, and be more capable. Um, so trying to get the robots not just to be, you know, cool, look cool and do cool stuff and produce a map, actually getting the robots to work together um, jointly so that, for example, we could send this robot out to go look for somewhere where there were stairs. It, not very good at going upstairs. Yeah. Um, so it could communicate that information to the spot and then the spot could be told to go out and climb the stairs and go further explore. So it's like a little superhero team you're sort of creating. Yeah. Uh, but of robots. Uh, Snake, go down that hole. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, so yeah, what's cool with these is, is we can drive it around. You can produce the map. This is all like everything is happening. It's coming over comms, over radios. Everything's happening in real time. Uh, but we can actually start to have teams of these robots. So you want to actually follow me over here. We have a second of these robots. You want to maybe just drive it out and send it a waypoint. So what you're looking at right now is the robot's making all of its own decisions. Um, so it'll drive through narrow openings, um, and this is sort of like the set it and forget it type of uh, autonomy, yeah. right? So the, the operator is still interacting with the system, and it's actually telling the system what to do. But once it gives a sort of a high-level command, which is go to this point, the robot makes all of the other decisions. Um, so the robot should theoretically avoid us, uh, where he's, he's not telling it. No one's driving it right now. Uh, so it actually has to make its own decisions. Um, so if we weren't standing here, it would just drive straight to the waypoint behind me. Little it sensors said, there's something in the way, I'm going to go around. Yeah. Um, so again, the operator is still sort of has high level control over what's going on. Uh, it can make interventions. It can see from the cameras in real time what's actually happening. Um, but the robot is making sort of all the low level decisions that it needs to in order to drive safely. Do, for doing things like going through doorways, very cool. Like, how do these things develop? Is it that like there's a problem we're trying to solve? Can we do it with a robot? Or is it like here's some new technology? Let's play with it and see what it can do. Yeah. So this one was directly. So we were dealing with um, operators, special operations operators. Um, they actually these trucks that you're looking at and how that all started was they started buying them off of Amazon themselves. Uh, it's a I won't tell the story here, but um, they started buying those trucks and putting like GoPros on the front of them, or were using them to actually like breach places in real operations yeah. uh, because they just couldn't get things fast enough, couldn't get things that were reliable enough. So like that vehicle, the, the, the base of that vehicle is you can buy it as an RC car. It's a very expensive RC car, yeah. but that's basically what it is. Like a fancy hobby car. Correct. Uh, Traxxas. Um, so yeah, for about a thousand bucks, you go buy them. They were buying them on Amazon and we sort of ended up meeting with them and we really took the sensing technology first and they were again, just like using a camera, but they were doing them completely themselves and fabricating it. We went down, met them for the first time, sort of took one of our sensor payloads, the boxes that are on top, put that on one of their RC cars, and it was like, whoa, um, this is possible. So it was a cool experience. So we've been dealing with, or, you know, we've had a, 
sort of contractor. I've been uh, interacting with them for numerous years now. Um, so we started with just, you know, again, sort of very, you know, minimal in what we were actually doing, and that has built over time into what you're looking at. So here we have three robots that are all sort of in that common map. The spot um, sort of interacts with all of them as well. They all have the same sort of autonomous capabilities that we've been talking about. But yeah, I mean, it's been years worth of, you know, great work and working with yeah. great people. And so is there like a, a dream? Is there like something you're like, well, this is what we've got to get to. It's like, okay, we've got to make a tiny beetle robot or something next. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the thing I, you know, around here is it probably changes every day, yeah. uh, which is a good problem to have, I think, sometimes. There's sort of a, a, a an overall goal for what we're trying to do. I mean, ultimately, it's to, to really continue to develop exactly what you're looking at here and really start to iron it out. Um, so basically, it's like you could go out, there's any terrain, and this robot could sort of figure it out. Yeah, I mean, it'd be hard to sort of cap, right, because you're always going to find a new challenge. Like, there's always going to be something new and some new problem, application area, people want to move it faster, they want to, you know, add flying vehicles to it. Um, so it's sort of a, a fun thing, um, and in working with the sponsor and just, you know, trying to figure out what the, the future looks like. Sweet. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to show us around. This was really awesome. Yeah, no, thank you for coming.